Hello and welcome to another episode of Ericsson Live. So one thing that I always, always want to impress on people and that is sometimes a little hard to get across is that there doesn't have to be anything wrong with you in order to be a prime candidate for coaching, right? You don't have to have a problem in order for coaching to be the thing for you. Like, What kind of problem do I have to have in order to, to need coaching? You can do just fine. You can have an amazing life and still profit and benefit from coaching. And to a degree, that's what we're talking about today. How to make a good thing or even a great thing, or even an amazing thing, even better with a solution-focused mindset. How can we build on what we have and then make it even better without necessarily um, maligning what it is that we have? So... In order to talk about that, we'll keep the intros really short and sweet today, we have Ericsson's um, star of all stars, uh, Richard Himes, uh, our program and faculty lead in the house today. Welcome, Richard. Glad to have you. Uh, yeah, pleasure to be here once again. I think this is the third time we've had a, a fireside chat. Yeah, third time's the charm. A lot of people really loved last time. And there's going to be like small segments of that coming out over the next couple of weeks and months. Um, oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So um, when we talk about so uh, uh, the the reason so there's there's a couple of reasons like one that's a little more hidden we'll get to that in a moment but one of the more extensive reasons of why we're talking about how to make a good thing even better is it's getting to be this time of the year it's getting to be a little bit of a reflective season right where we're kind of going into into reflection on what went well this year, what do I want for myself next year, you're getting into the territory of New Year's resolutions and that sort of thing. Um, so in that context, um, when we talk about how to make a good thing even better, why why phrase it like that? Like if we talk about solution-focused feedback, right, we have a certain methodology that we teach as a, as a part of the art and science of coaching, of how to give feedback to each other, how to give feedback to ourselves, honestly, as we are uh, on, on that coaching journey, as we are um, fostering that fragile little flower of confidence that we're building in terms of our conf uh, coaching confidence, etc. So why is that a good way to phrase it? What is kind of the magic behind phrasing some to make something even better rather than saying oh i want to improve it or i i i'm doing something bad and I, I want to make it right or something like that well uh in terms of a, of a solution focused mindset um i'm going to start broadly and generally and get to your your question more specifically so i mean like what is a solution focused mindset and um i you know, the words themselves sort of lend itself to what that definition would be, and right? it's uh, it's it's focusing on solutions. Um, I think I've mentioned this before in a uh, previous uh, interview, but it, it, it there's a distinction here between the idea of solution focused being looking for solutions to problems and actually shifting all of our attention towards what is wanted uh, or and we call those solutions well you could call it outcome focused you could call it results focused but we like solution focused much better and uh it's really about how we use our mind and um um in our program we talk about a distinction between the um what some people call the conscious mind or we can call it the attentive mind and uh, what we call the deeper knowledge system, uh, others have called that the unconscious mind, the, 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 the intuitive mind. And what we know is that the, the conscious mind has a limited amount of attention it, 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 at its disposal. And, and uh, um, I've used this metaphor over and over again. To me, it's like the, a flashlight in a dark room. And you're holding the flashlight and you get to choose what you're putting your, your attention on. Uh, and we know that there's four plus or minus chunks available to us consciously in the moment, in the moment now. So whatever we're putting our attention on in the moment now has a limit of how many chunks of attention are in our consciousness and our awareness. But the deeper knowledge system or the intuitive mind is still, um, uh, what's the word, processing all the other bits of information. This has been shown by research. But we do have a choice. That's where the conscious mind comes in. It's a choice. And as coaches, when we ask a client a question, we're fundamentally inviting them to where to shine that flashlight. 
So uh, developing a solution-focused mindset means using that choice that we have of where we want to put our attention. There's lots of different ways we can look at that metaphorically. Back to you know putting your uh, flashlight uh, in a room, you can shine it on the dusty old corner that needs to be swept, or you can sh shine it on some beautiful artwork and really feel good about your experience of, of uh, appreciating it. Um, it's hard to do both at the same time. In fact, it might even be argued that it's impossible. So when we talk about a solution-focused mindset, we're talking about habits of attention. And so getting back to what I started with, it's uh, being solution-focused, the way we see it and, uh, and, and talk about it and, and feel it, is that uh, it's it's it is a way of being those of you who know the logical levels those of you who are on this call know our wonderful logical levels model we're talking about at the level of being or identity uh, I am being solution focused rather than I do solution focused or I have solution focused skills which is where it usually starts as we build those habits so we don't have to as as Fabian started pointing out we don't have to go through our day and think about all the problems we have and then what's the solution because that's just going to put tension back on the problems and one of the interesting, I'm going to call it a flawed premise that we've probably all been trained to believe is that we need to know what the problems are in order to find the solutions and in order to have a good life. But that's not true. It's simply, I'm going to say it flatly, it's absolutely not true. It's not necessary to uh, go through your day using that attention capacity of the conscious mind to look for problems and then decide how to solve them. You can go directly to the wanted um, a nice way of thinking about it is that we go through life experiencing contrasting ex experiences, to, to be redundant, contrasting experiences, and these give us information and data for us to have a platform of what is wanted. Um, so I don't want that, but this is what I do want, and that's a wonderful habit to develop. So back to the feedback model. At Ericsson, we use a feedback model, and uh, we use it in multiple ways. We use it when we give feedback to each other in classrooms, when we um, uh, we ask these same questions of learners at, at the end of when they do their surveys. And it's basically two acronyms, right? What worked well, and we always ask that first, and even better if, and that goes to the title of this topic. Uh, how to, what is the topic again? Is how to make a good thing even better. Even better. Yes. A good thing even better. So these are wonderful questions. These are what the ICF would list as powerful questions. The International Coach Federation would list as powerful questions. Rather than what's broken, what's wrong, those, I mean, these are the things that we typically ask ourselves. Uh, what, what's wrong? You know, if, as soon as you hear your partner or your child go, ah, you go, what's the knee jerk question? What's wrong, honey? <laughs> right? What's wrong? Let's what did you break? What's wrong? <laughs> what did you break? What's sick? What needs to be fixed, right? Um, and that's a fine question to ask. But, but we would say, like, go to what is it that you do want? Find a way to bring it into a, a wanted. Uh, so we have the what worked well, and we always start with that, what worked well. It's because then we get to put our attention on what worked well. And the reason we do that, and it goes back to the conscious mind, is what we put our attention on, we get more of. What we put our focus on expands. What we put our attention on, we get more of. And again, this is about consciously developing that habit. What did work well? Um, and then the second question, which relates to the title of this of this particular live session, is even better if, right? So instead of asking um, what didn't work, it's what would be even better if. And it takes a little bit of time to, to massage your brain and, and begin to develop that way of thinking. Uh, but it's, a really, it's really useful. So when you think of things that are working in your life uh, or your career, your job, et cetera, right? Uh, what would be even better if in 2022? Yeah, specifically in the future, right? It's not about oh, it future. would have it would have been even better if this had happened or that wouldn't have happened. It's about hey, what what can I improve actively next time in yeah. the future? Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. Yes. And yes, because and the way the brain works is that it um, it it can only develop even better ifs, if it can visualize them it, 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 as happening in the future. The next time I do a coaching session or the next time I have an, uh, an interaction with my wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, the next time. So the even better if is so beautiful and, and elegant and powerful because it's, it's designed to bring us uh, 
unconsciously into visualizing how we're going to show up next time, but what we're going to do differently. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to th throw in a quick question to our audience here. What's working well for you right now as you are closing out the year, as you are kind of um, going towards that finish line in a way? It's just a milestone, right? Things keep on going in the new year. Um, but, but as you're closing out the year, what's working really well for you right now? What are you on a roll on? What have you built momentum on? And what is something that you can use as a base to then improve things even more. Let us know. Let, obviously, always let us know where you're, where you're joining us from, as always. But, but yeah, what's working really well for you right now? Sorry, Richard, go, go ahead. Well, I was going to piggyback on what you, you brought up there. So um, one of the ways that you can begin to ask about that, uh, and those of you who've taken our coaching program know this very well, is, is scaling questions, right? Um, one of the... One of the What makes scaling questions powerful and solution focused is that uh, it takes us out of thinking something is or isn't, you know, this black, white, off, on, good, bad, right? So, uh, again, we have a tendency habitually to speak in, in absolutes, right? So, um, it's kind of ironic how was your vacation? in black and it white. It was great. Yeah. 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 Right. Or how was your vacation? Terrible. Right. It's like, but if you scale it, like, well, I mean, on a scale of one to 10, how satisfying was that vacation or how satisfying is your relationship or how satisfying is your current job? Even if it's a one out of 10, 10 being absolutely satisfied, that still uh, lends itself to the even better if idea. So what Can I do differently, even better if next time, implement into my life, stop doing in order to bring it to just to a two or a three. Uh, this is a very um, relaxed way of, of, of asking questions about making things better because you're not expecting to go to a 10, even if it's at a one or a two. It's because the improvement becomes a new attention. And as we put our attention on it, we improve, improve, improve. Um, It's standard in the coaching world. Erickson uses the this process as well, um, which is the life balance wheel. Um, we use it in multiple ways at, uh, at Erickson in our coaching for prioritization. But um, you know, this wheel is if you envision a you know, like a, a wheel of, of maybe eight different parts, kind of like a, like a pie with eight different slices and uh, put uh, uh, categorize each of them in different life areas, relationships, finance, physical, spiritual, and such. And you can just quickly ask yourself, how satisfied am I in each of those areas? And uh, uh, you can do it on paper, you can do it on your computer, and, and then ask that same question, right? So, okay, what's working well and even better if? What's working well and even better if in my area of finances, in my area of relationships, in my family? Um, you know, I'm going very quickly through a, a process that can take 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah just or, some ideas. And if I, can, if I can throw in an observation there, what you were saying about, okay, we can see our current state as black and white. The same is true for if we're looking for solutions, right? Certain loved ones in my life have the tendency to say if, I offer generously but unsolicited advice um, that they say, well, you know, yeah, I can do that, but it's not going to address this thing and it's not going to fix this thing, right? So we also solutions or, or improvements, sometimes we dismiss them just because they're not addressing all of our problems and, and they're just not making our life a complete paradise all of a sudden. Um, but what's the beauty of the scaling is, okay, let's get from a five to a six. And that's enough for now. It's just about getting into momentum. You don't have to jump to a 10 all at once if you're not ready for it. But what is something that just gets you going, that improves your life just a little bit and gets you into the right direction? Well, yeah, yeah. That was an interesting example you give because um, um, I, I think in many cases there is that implicit unexamined premise, which I, I'm going to boldly say is a flawed premise, that again, one needs to put attention on the problem in order to get that solution. And um, I, 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 there are so many examples, if you really searched your history, that that didn't have to be true, right? So, um, and that could be true even in health, right? You can put your attention so much on, how, on the physical well-being that you want that you, that you don't need to actually do anything 
to um, to focus on the problem to to have that better health. That could, and that's an example that I'm thinking of because that was recent for me. So um, like it's it's an interesting statement for me to make that it doesn't matter how this started, this problem it doesn't matter how it came up, it doesn't matter what the cause is, right? Um, it's uh, I just need to put my attention on the wanted and why I want it. So uh, I'll give a positive example of what I mean there. I might have used this in another call. So it's like when you um, it's like when you were a child. I think we did have this before. Like when you were a child. You were a child, or if you can think of a child, you're a child, right? There's an, and you had an attachment to some toy, right? At five years old, some teddy bear or some, right? And, uh, but then you became seven years old and you became interested in something else, right? Like, like I'm going to use it, maybe Lego, Lego bricks, right? And that moment that the teddy bear was let go of is not consciously remembered. Right? It just happened because something else became more important. And I think that's the key. Something else becomes so interesting, compelling, um, takes up all of our senses and attention. I really want that so much. Oh, I can taste it. I can feel it. That the, the neurological system just reorients around that. And the problem sometimes just disappear. Uh, in our coaching program, in the third module, um, which is uh, one of our one of the advanced modules, uh, we offer a number of different kinds of what we call uh, gremlin tools, gremlin handling tools, which means like an objection. I want it, but. And one of them, which is so interesting to me, is called the postponement technique. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a coach coaching, let's say, Fabian, and he comes up with a but, right? Oh, there's this difficulty, this problem. What if this happens? And uh, I might say, well, uh, would you be okay to just put that on the shelf? I'll, I'll make a note of it. And then near the end of the session, we'll get back to it. And if there's an agreement, it's like a mini contract. If there's an agreement and all is well with that and we move along, what do you imagine happens when I ask Fabian near the end of the call? So what about this objection from 50 minutes ago? Most of the time it dissipates, it becomes irrelevant. Um, and that's just the nature of the mind, right? That's being solution focused. Yeah. And it is I want to mention something else. Go for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Okay, I'll go ahead. Yeah, I, I just popped into my head as I was talking about uh, just what I was just talking about, and I think it's such an interesting set of research. So Martin Seligman, who we can call the grandfather of Optimal, which used to be called Positive Psychology, him and his team did some research probably about three years ago. It was before COVID, and uh, I think it was in New York, and they got a, a, a thousands of people to have um, their smartphones. Um, rigged, for lack of a better word, to to buzz or vibrate every, I think it was once an hour, and then they were to they were to honestly write in what they were thinking about, and then they analyzed all this data, and what they discovered was that, uh, which was a surprise to them, that most of the time people are thinking about a worrisome thing happening in the future. Oh, I'm going to be late for the bus. Oh, my boss is going to get upset with me. And Martin Seligman wanted to change uh, the name of humans from human sapiens to human prospectus because we're prospecting the future in our thinking brain, but unfortunately in a negative way mostly as a way to prevent bad things from happening. Uh, what's also interesting in the, in the article I read was that in many cases, very rarely did the actual bad thing we worry about actually happen, <laughs> right? And uh, so, you know, again, we have a choice. We can, we can, we can begin to anticipate good things. Um, when we use the WWEBI or scaling or all these other tools we've been talking about. Yeah, but just to, yeah. um, so you might ask, so why worry about it if the thing, if the thing didn't actually happen? So why is that a bad thing? Well, the problem yeah. is that we already reap the negative, like the the negative effects of that thing happening. It almost doesn't matter whether it happens or not, because with us anticipating and visualizing it so much, you were already in stress response, right? We are already yes. experiencing it as if it were happening. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yeah. That uh, and that accumulation of little stressors uh, becomes a, a kind of an un underlying unease or underlying unhappiness. Um, um, I, like what did Freud call it? Oh, he had a name for it. Um, 
like an un underlying dread or something, but I, mm. that's not the right word. A malaise, that's it, yes. Right? And he believed that we have no choice but to experience this uh, um, ongoing malaise as a, just for the mere nature of this being human. I don't believe that, obviously, so because I do believe we have a choice as to where we put our attention and we can develop the capacity to um, look at the wanted and, uh, and trust that all, all of it will work out for us. It's it's um, it's a bit of a leap of faith. It can be to let go of a of a problem oriented mind structure, uh, but it's worth it. Yeah, and just to tie that in with yeah. the balance wheel that you mentioned, uh, what I see often very much happening is when you offload all these worries and all these kind of analyses <laughs> to the paper to to the page um, or to the screen. Um, a lot of times, when people actually see their life balance wheel and they see the score that they gave it, and then we visualize it and we fill it in, a lot of times what comes up is, huh, I thought this would be worse. Right? This looks so much better <laughs> yeah. than, I, than I thought. My life isn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, it's not, my life isn't so bad after all. One of the other things that, uh, that's quite interesting is that uh, when, you, when, when we revisit the life balance wheel, uh, which we teach how to do that in... Uh, again, in module three with a widescreen summary. Um, and what's so interesting um, is that when we re-rate the wheel on the satisfaction out of 10 for each of those segments, you know, uh, financial or physical or social, um, areas that weren't attended to consciously by coaching did, did rise in satisfaction. And I know Marilyn Atkinson talks about that, that when, a, when, the, when, the, when the unconscious mind sees, or the deeper knowledge system sees the wheel and sees the gaps, it wants to do everything it can to fill those in. So it, it's wonderful, isn't it, that on, on an un, unconscious level, a deeper knowledge level, our brains are working in favor, our, our neurological systems are doing everything they can to fulfill these uh, uh, c concrete conscious and unconscious intentions. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've probably mentioned it before, but in driving school, they told us if you are losing control of your car on ice or something, aqua planning, hydroplaning, I think you call it in English, um, you, you, and you skid towards a tree, don't look at the tree. Don't look at the danger. Don't look at the problem. Look at where you want to go because your body unconsciously yes. will do everything in its power to get you there. And uh, yeah, German car driving school instructors do not are not inclined to kind of believe in esoteric things or kind of uh, tell you things that might or might not be true. Right? It's about life and death. So that's something that 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 we use that knowledge in a lot of in a lot of different areas of our lives, and it's something we take advantage of a lot in, in coaching. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, yeah, that's a that's a great. Um... It's a great example because, uh, or analogy, because it's, it's, if you're in a car, you're already going somewhere, right? There's some, an intention to go somewhere. And then this thing happens, and then it, the shift of attention to the problem. Uh, and the advice is to put your attention back to where you're going. Because, like, we don't drive with our you know, eyes on the ground. We drive with our eyes towards where we're headed. And uh, another one I was thinking, um, and I remember this very clearly happening to me more than once, <laughs> Uh, as a as a kid, and I didn't understand it, and it bothered me, but I get it now. It's like uh, on a bicycle, and you'd see a stone, and you know, Richard, I don't hit that stone, don't hit that stone, trying to adjust to not hit the stone, and uh, and inevitably I would hit that that stone or that rock, like, and of course I went into the usual, what is wrong with me, right? Which is a terrible question to ask oneself, right? Well, what is right with me is a better one, <laughs> you know. Um, I remember uh, taking a cruise with another couple, and. Uh, um, we, uh, we were on the top floor and they had, um, um is it called bocce? That sort of outdoor lawn bowling game. Oh, you mean ACC, I think it's pronounced like the f bull, like the French call it bull, where you like, you, you throw, like, it's, it's like curling, but not on ice, but on sand kind of. It's on the, well, we did it on the grass and it was, um, it was just like bowl, uh, bowling pins. And then you had a, a, a you had to hit them. Okay. Right? It was like an it was like an outdoor on the grass bowling game, and I was doing it with with this, uh, the one of my friends of this other couple who had played it many times. I had never played it before, but for some reason I decided I'm going to really just focus on the ball hitting these pins, I guess they're called, and uh, I was super successful. Like, and uh, and he was so surprised. <laughs> 
Yes, and the more I was solution focused, the more he was going into, how come I'm not hitting them? And uh, and I didn't tell him my secret right away until afterwards, <laughs> but I was really using that as an, as an experiment and really focusing. I could visualize the pins um, falling over rather than going into a, well, you know, I don't want to miss, which is, you know, if you're saying that to yourself, I don't want to miss, you have to visualize what missing looks like. Yeah, don't hit the punch bowl over there. <laughs> don't destroy the yeah. furniture. Yeah. This is a really challenging one um, for parents, uh, as I'm sure you, know, you may be discovering at some point. It's really common to want to say to the to the kid, "Don't do X, uh, don't go there." But uh, as their brains are developing, they have to visualize what you mean, mm -hmm. right? They have to have a concept of what you mean. So if you say, "Don't touch that," there's the right away they're making an image of touching it unconsciously, and and then they go and do it, and then you yell at them and say, "What? I just told you not to." Right? And they look at you baffled, and both of you don't know what's going on, but uh, but we do because we know that the brain um, uh, follows, you know, I I sir follows our our concept, our intention, attention. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's let's shift gears here because now that we've set the scene, sure. we've explained the whole idea behind www and EBI, what's working well, even better if. And that if we change something, it's not necessarily because we think what came before is deficient or anything like that. It's just because it's time for something even better, right? It's, it can make way, it can evolve into something even better. And I think we have a prime example prepared, basically, that's going on where it's not just something that we preach and teach. Um, it's something that we also put into practice ourselves. So would you like to let us in on our, our grand example that uh, that illustrates everything sure. we talked about? Sure, yeah. So um, at Ericsson, every three years, we revise or update, refresh the, uh, the flagship program, which is the Art and Science of Coaching. Um, and we're doing that again. Um, we... Um, we will be launching in January. I think the first online, uh, online. it's only online right now. Uh, uh, oh no, I lied. It's, uh, uh, we'll have some, an on-site version as well. So I'll talk about that in a moment. So the online will start, the first one will start January 18th. And then there's another one that starts the, the week after. They're in different time zones. And then in March and April, there will be an on-site version in New York and an on-site version in London. Oh. And uh, so this is, we're calling this officially the task, uh, at, at, it, internally at Ericsson, we're calling it the task of the Art and Science of Coaching Revision 2022. Um, uh, in the marketing materials, we're calling the renewed or enhanced task uh, or the enhanced Art and Science of Coaching. And... Um, yeah, so you know, we teach in our program changes in that inevitable, and uh, you know, as as the as the the world upside changes, COVID had a huge impact on this particular uh, version of the revision because of how everybody went online, and uh, we were already online, and uh, uh, but that meant that we weren't the only ones online. We had other coaching schools out there going online and we had a new competitive field uh which was great for us because it really had us sit up and take notice like what we got to still be leading edge because that's what we claim so um so in a in a sort of metaphorical sense uh what we're doing is like taking a house that's had the same furniture and the same paint and the same curtains uh, for a number of years, and it's time for a some renovation. It's time for some some renewal. So a lot of the, uh, what's going into the art and science of coaching revision is uh, is beautification and uh, is uh, is a new look and feel. Is uh, as some of us like to say, is just sexifying it a bit more, making it cooler, and appealing to a broader audience. Um, so we find that uh, with with co our coaching uh, program, we uh, a lot of the people who are interested in coaching, uh, who actually sign up for our programs, uh, you know, are um, are around my age and uh, or a bit younger, a bit older, and uh, and, and we want to bring in some of the you know some new younger millennials and whatever the younger generations are. If they're not even that, that young anymore. Gen. <laughs> We're not even that young anymore, us millennials. You're not. Millennials are in their yeah. 30s now, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we just want to appeal to it. So, uh, in in January, three things will be launching around the same time. And 
the, I've already mentioned the Art Design to Coaching revised version, and then uh, the website, uh, a new website will be launched with a new look and feel with our updated brand, our updated logos. And then um, something else that uh, that I'm going to keep a little bit quiet right now, but something that learners have asked for, for, for forever, which is some kind of um, continuation, a community-based continuation that, that happens after graduation, after. It's called the Erickson uh, Alumni Network, and that's exactly how it sounds. It's for alumni, uh, any of the paths, and it's, um, it's uh, a subscription-based model, and that will be a way to re stay connected to the Erickson community. There will be master classes. There will be um, business building uh, tools and uh, some demos and things. And that's all I'm going to say for now, because that's not my project. That yeah. uh, belongs to somebody else. A so lot of viewers, task, a lot of viewers of this, of this program have actually asked for that. And, and it's like, can we have something like that? Just because so far, I think this has been kind of the, where we get together, it has been kind of a bit of a replacement not drug, you know, a kind of replacement touch point where people say, Oh, it was so nice to get back in touch with it. It's so nice to, talk or listen to somebody who gets it, who's part of that Ericsson tribe, right? So, yeah, that's... that's, that's. Well, that, I think that, that word is key. How many times have I uh, heard learners say to me in, in class, it's like, I'm with people who get me and in ways that even my partner doesn't get me. Like, this is this is my people uh, and, uh, and, and looking for ways to stay connected and... Um, uh, you know, with Ericsson solution focused mindset and people, <laughs> that's a word. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we heard, uh, or Ericsson heard th those requests and finally, uh, and listened and then, uh, and, and is putting something into place. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, what else can I say about the art and science of coaching task revision? Well, I mean, we do, we do, we do still believe that the content, meaning the model, the coaching arrow, uh, the four uh, the four pillars of solution focused coaching, which I uh, talked about in the last interview with you, Fabian, um, which we're going to emphasize much more explicitly in, in the revised version. Um, but uh, you know, there's not going to be any changes in content. I think some things will be moved around in terms of order. Um, we're introducing something called coaching labs. So uh, coaching, what, what, what it'll mean is that there'll be the regular uh, online or on-site sessions that present new material, uh, that, uh, that have the opportunity to discuss it. There's demonstrations by the facilitator, there's exercises by the learners. Uh, and then um, there will be uh, fifth or sixth session, I'm, I'm not really thinking about it right now, um, is called a coaching lab. And a coaching lab is really taking all the previous learnings and it's an opportunity to practice. So there will be a coaching demo that has been recorded that the facilitator will show, uh, pause it, discuss it, and analyze it, do kind of a CSI for a forensic analysis on it, <laughs> answer the questions, and then with that fresh in mind, the learners will be put into their triads. Uh, those of you who don't know what a triad is, it's, uh, it's a three-person group, if you like, breakout with a coach, Coachy, a coach, a coachy, or client, and an observer, and they do a half-hour session, coaching session, with the coach coaching the, the client who's just on the call, observer listening, and then they switch and switch, and they give each other feedback. So these will be done live. Up until now, the, the, the triads have been done outside of class as part of the asynchronous. So uh, two of them for uh, uh, for the first half of the program, and two of them for the second half of the program will be done in the coaching lab. The third one will still be done outside of class. And uh, the reason we're putting this into place is because of the request we've had for more facilitator feedback during coaching. And uh, so that's there for that and uh, setting everyone up for success. Um, and uh, and so that's an exciting thing that we're adding. Uh, so uh, we've uh, been uh, filming uh, coaching demos, uh, new uh, coaching demos that are done in a virtual setting because mm -hmm. I, I think that that's most likely what everyone's going to be doing when they're coaching very i'd be surprised if there's much uh, on-site coaching going to be happening anymore um so i think this is unprecedented i haven't really found any examples of really good demos uh, on youtube or vimeo that are really demonstrating doing a virtual coaching session uh, and so we have a number of those uh being created fabian did one and uh 
um, that's, uh, that will increase the library of, of coach demos. Um, uh, and yeah, and more explainer videos mm -hmm. will be part of the, of the program because uh, that's the trend in education. The asynchronous is going to increase um, and uh, so that we can shorten the duration of the program, um, which has been a huge request from uh, our customers who are looking for uh, the opportunity to get their ICF credential faster and sooner. That's, that's, that's big on the horizon. So I'll say one more thing. So uh, I think those of you who are alumni know that we migrated from um, the LMS we're using, the learning management system, which is called uh, the original, the first one was called Growth Academy, that's the company. We migrated to Canvas um, during the summer and we're fully migrated now. And of course the, the, the enhanced tasks will be housed in this Canvas. Love the new LMS, by the way. Big, big company. Oh, it's fabulous. Like, well, it's very user-friendly. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, and we're still improving it, and there's still features that we uh, haven't unlocked yet that we're going to be that'll be part of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the enhanced task. Um, there's a reason I brought that up. The canvas. Sorry, I kind of I I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> so I one thing, may, maybe it, maybe it gets you going if I talk if I if I if I gush a little bit about the new sure. learning management system. So so what I love, for example, is that we have part of the course is reflective journals, right? One of my absolute favorite quotes of all time, John Dewey, educational specialist: "We don't learn from experience; we learn from reflecting on experience." Yeah. So so one of the elements that we have in there, reflective journals, what are you taking away from these courses, from these specific lessons? How are you going to implement that in the future? Um, that used to be writing only. And now for people that love to talk as much as I do, they can also submit that in, in video recording form, for example, right? And there's there's even more ways to interact with each other. Whenever we have blog entries, we can make that a vlog entry in a way. Right? And we can put, we can make it the whole thing much more visual, much more graphical, and the whole thing just flows more. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, it really, it, yeah, it lends itself to that kind of uh, interaction, uh, which is something we want to uh, encourage and, uh, and, and create a culture of, uh, of sharing. Um, I, I think it'll be what I foresee because Canvas does lend itself to this um, is that um, creative learners might you know create their own little video on some piece of the art and science of coaching and, and post it and then it could be you know that could become something that's shared with the entire uh, universe of, of Ericsson grad uh, learners and grads so that that, that kind of thing is, is very exciting for me so that, so that like, almost like an open source sharing um, crowdsourcing of mm -hmm. uh, of content uh, you know it's a, you know I've trained I've trained so many modules and it's impossible. I, it's never happened that I had a module. Someone didn't come up to me with a book idea or a book to read or a video to watch. And it's like, yeah, I, I, I joke that I have to stop coaching for a year, stop training for a year just to, to read all these books. Not sure that's and enough. so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore. Yeah, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, this, so, so the sharing of resources is, uh, is, is uh, going to be part of the the experience in, in the the uh, the revised task. So now I remember. Thank you. Now I remember uh -huh. why I brought up Canvas. Now one of the things is Canvas uses the word module in a different way than we use. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, we're going to be letting go of the word modules, and that's that's going to take some time uh, in the cultural shift. But uh, so what is now called Module One and Module Two, those of you who are familiar with it, is now called Solution Focus Essentials, or just Essentials for short. And what is now module three and module four is called advanced applications, solution focused advanced applications, but we've been calling it advanced application for short. So it's gone down from four modules to two courses. The modules are courses basically. And, uh, and if you go to the website, you'll see we are offering two paths, two distinct paths, and this has an alignment with what the ICF is all about and what, they, uh, what their credentialing paths have to do. So, the two paths are the accreditation and the diploma. Uh, the accreditation is the new name for what was formerly called the qualification path. So we decided to make it a bit more robust and call it an accreditation and it'll have a, a, you know, a, a new title 
will be the Ericsson accredited coach, will be the, the certificate title. Uh, it seems that that is becoming more and more popular for people who really want to get to the ICF um, application process and get their ACC, uh, accredited associate coach from the ICF. When we, interestingly, when we first launched the qualification path way back in 2019, it's funny to say way back, but way back. It feels, it feels like, like a different world. Yeah. <laughs> Holy, it wasn't so popular, but within a year it became very popular. So the, there's the accreditation path. So it's just, it's, it's, it consists of the essentials, solution focused essentials right now, module one and two, plus uh, the 10 hours of mentoring. Um, we've uh, also, uh, uh, changed the, the length of the group mentorings. Um, we found that one hour once a week wasn't cutting it. And so there are longer sessions. I think there's three, two and a half hour sessions, I forget, um, so that they have a deeper dive into the core competencies and the, men the group mentoring process. Well, in, so the spirit the of, in the spirit of even better if, I, I think it was cutting it. I think it was some, some quality yeah. experiences that we had. I did it that way. It's just yeah, yeah. how might it be even better in the future, right? So, so that's, that's what it's all about. You bet, yes. And then uh, the diploma path uh, is um, uh, the, we, is a name we're keeping, so the Ericsson Coach Diploma, and the title is still the same, Ericsson Professional Certified Coach, and it's an, it's for the ACTP path, and um, it's right now it's modules one to four plus the coaching mastery program. Now it's the solution focus essentials, advanced applications, and we're calling it the advanced mentoring, which is shifting it. So there's the essentials mentoring for um, the accreditation and there's the advanced mentoring for um, the diploma. The difference is, is that the mentoring for the accreditation is at the ACC level. So it's assuming that you are uh, experienced at coaching a hundred hours uh, for the uh, advanced mentoring at the end of the diploma program, the assumption is you, you're skilled at the level of what they call PCC, professional certified coach, of 500 client coach hours. And so the standard is more rigorous and higher. And then uh, then what's the final piece of the diploma, which is staying, is the oral assessment, uh, which is like a mentor session, but with marks, right? And then if you pass all that, you get a certificate. Like, and if you have your client coach hours, you can... Um, apply to the ICF. You know, and I think it's just worth mentioning that, you know, Ericsson Coaching International and the ICF are two separate distinct entities, right? And I think a good way to think about it is like this, like if, if somebody is pursuing a uh, law, they get their law degree from a university, but that doesn't automatically make them a lawyer. They have to apply for at the, the bar or the law society, go through a rigorous uh, testing, and then they are stamped with uh, whatever it is that they get. They are a member of the bar, right? An accountant will take the training at a university or college to become an accountant. Um, they can practice accounting, but if they want to be CGA, a certified general accountant, and I forget the higher designation, they have to go through um, a, another process. So yeah. it's, yeah, there's another one. I think there's a higher one, an AA, like, okay. yeah, that's higher than general certified accountant. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that for for, for for this situation. Like there's only so much Ericsson can do, right? We provide the training. We've been approved by the ICF. We provide the mentoring. And, uh, and then... And once you have all that, you can then apply at the ICF. If you have the hours, you pay a fee, of course. You submit your certification with the relevant uh, logo on it. And um, um, depending on which path you're going, you might have to submit a recording and a transcript. And they do the, a, a, re a review internally, and that's on them. Yeah. So public service announcement, because I hear this all the time during the webinars when we get people that are interested. <laughs> Uh, coaching schools do not provide you with the credentials, with the ICF credentials, right? Coaching schools provide yeah. you with a certification that is valuable and nice and goes a certain way. But if you really want the gold standard or the, or, that our industry has to offer, that's the ICF um, credential. And that is only awarded by the ICF. No coaching school can give you that. Right, so sometimes you hear, ah, but this other coaching school, I don't know, they 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 tell me they give me the the credential if I do this and this. It's like no, 
it's standard no. it's standardized by the ICF every no matter what school you go through you have to hit certain marks you have to go through certain milestones in order to get there um, so just make really really sure when you select your coaching school that it has the ACTP stamp it's an accredited coach training program it you can attest to how much work it is to getting that stamp. Um, so whatever school you choose, make sure that it has that seal of approval because that, that means you're getting your money's worth. Yeah, yeah, right. And that's the highest standard that they, uh, you know, the highest designation they will give a program. Um, and, uh, and then a portion of an ACTP program, an ACTP program has to be a minimum. I'll just repeat what it means. Accredited coach training program. An, an ACTP program has to have a minimum of 125 hours. Uh, we have more than that um, currently and with the, with the new version as well. Um, and um, a portion of that that's over 40 hours automatically becomes their, 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 the lower tier, which is the ACSTH, accredited coach training. Approved coached specific training hours, right? So that's so it's like, you know, the highest standard includes the lower standards right. as well. Well, I don't want to say lower, but the you know, the other the less levels. expansive one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's all. It's very inside baseball, right? Like a lot of people are like, "What are you guys talking about?" So let's just kind of let's wipe the slate clean a little bit. Let's imagine somebody's tuning in just now. Yeah, does not know how Ericsson worked in 2021, but wants to know what am I getting in 2022? Like, what is Ericsson offering um, that I should want? Oh, well, <laughs> the best training in the world, <laughs> the best coach training in the world, right? Well, so, uh, you mean, Ericsson has, uh, has a human development uh, uh, education um, educator, education company. We've been around 40 plus years, uh, so we're not a fly-by-night company. And uh, um, and uh, the what what became today's art and science of coaching uh, has been uh, the result of years of, of uh, trainings and and uh, WWEBIs uh, making the training better and better. And then when it was launched plus 20 plus years ago, you know it continues to be revised uh, with an eye on you know research uh, both in social psychology and in neuroscience and how the brain works. And uh, all the facilitators love, um, you know, th these kinds of things like how the brain works and such. So uh, we're so we've got that behind us, right? The other thing is that, like I said earlier in this call, uh, we're not one of those schools who all of a sudden had to become online because of COVID. We were online for 10 plus years and had developed uh, with uh, adult education principles and, uh, and uh, best practices, our style of training online. Um, in most cases online uh, before COVID meant self-paced uh and that's what people think online means you you you're, you're alone you're you're working uh, you're writing reports you're writing essays you're uh, i mean this is how a lot of universities were doing online and then you, uh if you were interacting it was in a chat form and that was it no for us it was like you know we have three hour sessions that are live using uh, a, you know, Zoom or we were using WebEx before and they're designed to be engaging and interesting and interactive because coaching is a skills-based, competency-based uh, learning process. It's not knowledge-based. There is some knowledge base to it, but it's not the fundamental thing. It's not like learning philosophy where you can be tested with essays and, and uh, you know quizzes and stuff. A little bit of that, but really we are designing the program so that you are coaching and practicing and developing skills and competencies um, you know, at that level. So that's all true and that's still there. Uh, what, uh, with, the, with the Art and Science of Coaching that's launching in, um, in January, uh, we've upped our game, made it even better if, uh, with some really great coaching demo videos uh, that will be used both live during classes and, and available in the, in the uh, LMS, the Learning Management System. And uh, and um, um, just shorter, more succinct explainer videos that explain certain models and processes. We're a real fan of the flipped classroom or the inverted classroom, which means that it kind of goes back to what I'm saying, which means that what is considered well, the traditional uh, definition of a flipped classroom is what is considered um, theory. 
uh, lecture. That's done as a video. So a university is using inverted classroom, the professor's talking, lecturing, but what's considered homework is done live during the class. So that's the flip, right? So like the lecture is done at home watching a video, that's from the learner's point of view, and then anything that's homework is done live with a facilitator there to, to, to be present and to be available in their skill development. So we've adopted that approach and we're going to continue to that approach so the you know the, the you know we have a lot of different models it, you know, i mentioned one already the four pillars uh, uh, solution focused coaching so there'll be like nice short um nice looking explainer videos and then they'll be brought into the live session with discussion and then there'll be practice and uh interaction and yeah from what you've been telling us before what i'm also getting is people can get to their ICF certification faster than ever before without sacrificing what makes Ericsson special, that deep, deep interaction where it's these real virtual classrooms, emphasis on classroom, where you really have meaningful interactions with the other students, get to know them really, really well. Um, and most of the time you're actually practicing, you're talking, you're integrating rather than just listening. Um, That's right. Yeah. And um, is it true that we're going to be doing four hours instead of three hours? To, to get like, no. to fewer sessions faster? No? Okay, that's, that's just something I no, picked no, up. No, we're keeping, the three, we're keeping the three hours. Yeah, we're keeping the three hours. It's actually three hours and 15 minutes, but 15 minutes is break time, but that's not considered instructional three hours. hours we're keeping the three yeah. hours because that, that seems to be working, and uh, the testing we did, and, uh, increasing this, the, the synchronous is, is, is not the way to go. Right. So what we're doing is increasing the asynchronous um, so per online session of three hours, the learner is uh, required to do an hour of asynchronous or self-study. And most of that would be watching videos. And it all, doesn't all have to be done at once. I mean, you know, if you have a, a session on Thursday, you could watch a bit of it on Monday, a bit of it on Tuesday, do some blogging on Wednesday. You can, you can just devote 20 minute segments uh, and 20, you know, an hour divided by 20 is three, three 20 minute segments. So, um, so, it, you know, it is quite doable, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's and, the important uh, part, right? Like that it's, it's doable, it fits into people's lives. So what goes into that is as well that we offer so many different time zones that are available for people all around the world. Um, so, you know, if you don't live on the West Coast, it, it's fine. You can live in, in Africa like I do um, and, and have something that starts at 6 p.m. your time, for example, that just fits in yeah, with the and, rhythm and, that, that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I just I think it is wise to, to know that that um, if, you know for people who sign up with with the, the online version, which is which is like continuing, um, that there's an awareness that there's a there's a commitment required to this one hour uh, per session. Like if you, if you're doing the, uh, the two hour two sessions per week. So we offer the program in different, you know, in, in a one session per week. That, of course, takes longer to, to in the duration. Uh, and then we have the two times a week as well. But it's still one hour per set uh, of additional home study uh, that's, or, or prep work, as we like to call it, because it's it's just, the program is designed to do the prep work before the session because they linked uh, and they build on that learning. Um, it's it's an interesting thing, and I'll just I'm just going to be transparent. It's an interesting thing because I do, I do this too. I've done this. Is to think that if I'm signing up for something online, I can continue my full busy schedule and not have to move anything around. I just have to be there for that three hours. But it's not really like that. It's like uh, because uh, it, it it's 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 a good idea to think about the program like you would if you were going to be doing it on site and. When people do on-site programs or in-person programs, they often clear their clear their calendar and they, you know, they, and and devote their full attention. Unless there's a meeting they cannot get out of, to, you know, to those four days: uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, whereas online, you know, people add it to their already existing busy schedule. It's not always a good idea to do that. It's, it's, it's to be aware of um, some extra time is to, is needed. Yeah, but when you are, when you do have that. Uh, that that commitment um it, it is it is doable, amazing right like you do you do yeah. and, and you can do it in your own pace like you do have those three hour yeah. chunks where you just have to be there because it's synchronous it's really and, and we make the most of that but the parts that we, yeah. where we don't have to be together you do that in your own time 
um, and you you do that yeah. whenever you have time and you fit it into your busy schedule, right? So so it is like like uh, Laurie is writing in the chat here. Ericsson is flexible, doable, and interactive. I think uh, I think that's a nice summary. Ooh, we, sh we should hire her for marketing. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, yeah, um that, it's something that I can recommend. I did it when 2015 or something. It's only getting better. It's only evolving. Um and it is it is something really really special uh where where you 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 get something that is still very rare and Laurie is a great example um kind of the the teaching assistants that we have make make for an amazing experience because they hold the space for the facilitators mm -hmm. and the class to connect, right? There's never any downtime because one person says, oh, I can't see anything, and the whole class grinds to a halt because the facilitator is trying to, fill, yeah. to, to, to figure out the technical problem. Um, but yeah. our TAs take care of that elegantly behind the scenes. But then also our TAs aren't technical assistants, they're teaching assistants, right? You get a full-fledged coach on top of the one that's your facilitator. Um, they are... They are fully equipped, fully uh, educated, credentialed coaches with their own practices, with their own set of experiences. So what I particularly love to do is, is draw on their experience and see um, what can they add to it specifically because usually the TAs are a little closer to the students than to the facilitator in terms of where they are in building their coaching business. Right, so so often they can help translate a little bit what the facilitator is saying. Okay, when you start out, this is what I am doing right now. This is what I did. So you get perspectives from two points in the journey, which I found incredibly valuable. Sorry, I always have to point that out because it's. Um, uh, it's oh yeah, that's great. And 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 you know, one of the amazing things about Ericsson uh, uh, is it's like this magnet for. Um, really great, progressive, interesting, engaging people, whether it's the learners, the facilitators, the TAs, like uh, it's such, this tribe we were talking about earlier. It's like uh, when, I, when I read the feedback from the, the surveys, uh, one of the things that gets remarked on is is that uh, Erickson gave that learner an opportunity to hang out with and interact with people they wouldn't normally have the opportunity to do so. You know, like you, you can have a massage a therapist in the same class with a with an executive from Google, and they're coaching and 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 connecting, um, and you know this diverse um, range of, of expertise and experience and wisdom, backgrounds, time zones, countries. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a party. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's a party, <laughs> and, and a truly global one at that. Um, yeah. So you can have. And there's crazy people, right? Like I had a I had a course where we had almost all the continents involved because um, there was a lady from the Philippines who was doing a night shift, and during her night shift, she would at two a.m. her time, she would dial in and and learn coaching with us, right? And so we we had like all kinds of different time zones involved there, and and you just learn so much implicitly from each other from the different approaches. And another thing that I find so beautiful about the Exonian approach is we're not trying to make you into an Ericsson drone. Like we have a certain common canon of things that, that, that everybody, like a standard that everybody learns, but on the basis of that, you can become any type of coach you want. And, and, and you do it, yeah, you bring yeah. in your own genius, right? Like it's not that, that everybody coaches the exact same way, but, but you still, it still matters what you bring into it. Yeah, that'll be very. That's going to be uh, even more evident with these coaching demos because we, you know, we we have different facilitators doing these different coaching demos, and each of them have their own personality coming through, their own styles. And it's really wonderful. You don't have to model fully uh, one facilitator's style of coaching. And uh, yeah, it, it's and that other piece you brought up is important because it's easy to get caught up in the idea that uh, that um, executive coaching or uh, organizational coaching is different than life coaching or personal coaching and structurally it is not right the model that we teach is applicable to any topic it's the topic that will be different but the topic is just it's just the it's just back to the you know it's, it's the outcome of the session um, but the coaching structure and process to assist somebody you know to identify their life 
dream life partner or to uh, uh, have an agenda for their next their next meeting or to um, to come up with pol a new policy for their employees uh, is the same structure and uh, so that's that's wonderfully freeing and liberating it's not uh, I, I'm I, to be completely frank I'm quite suspicious of, of schools that teach a specific type of coach training uh which is niche based because it shouldn't be that way i mean you, 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 i think it's very empowering to know that you can coach anybody anywhere i coached somebody who was a financial wizard and uh and i was able to coach him not having any idea what he was talking about and i know that sounds funny but i mean he was saying hedge funds and mutual funds and at the time he didn't know what those were but it didn't matter because it's not about the content the content is very I don't want to dismiss it, but it's it's not about the content. As the coach, we are using our solution focus methodology to assist them with a series of powerful questions, and we don't really even have to know what they mean, which is very interesting. Like we could, uh, we we actually uh, have explored doing something called content free coaching, where we bring someone through a process, a coaching process, without without them the client revealing what the topic was about, and they get a result. And this is extremely liberating, and there's some and there's a lot of good reasons why. Uh, mainly, it's because when we go into content. I, what, the, what, the, the, what the outcome or the topic is about, it's what I mean by content, uh, the story, it's much more, um, there's a much, there's a, a, a somewhat of a greater degree of a likelihood of going into the problem. Right? And if we don't go into content and we go more into structure and process and what we like to call flow um, in, in our advanced coaching, um, then it, it, we are free to put our attention on the, you know, what works well, even better if, and, 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 and become the designers of a great life for ourselves. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm sure many of you on this call will resonate with, with what I'm about to say to bring that point home, you know, perhaps something unpleasant happened to you and you have told the story to your best friend and then you told your story, the same story to your partner. And then, they talk to their friends of, of their friends of your friends and someone comes to you and say, oh, I heard something blah, blah, bad happen to you. And you think to yourself, I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to revisit that story. I've already told it to three people. Uh, this happens to me. I, 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 it's because neurologically, when we repeat a story, whether it's positive or negative, we are re re running it through our neurological system yet again and reinforcing it. it goes back to my earlier point of what we put our attention on, we get more of. So, you know, we might find yourself saying, oh, um, it's okay. I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to get into it. And there's a reason because to talk about it means to relive it. And that's, that's the risk when we put our attention on content, on story. And our coaching model is about structure, right? We give a very clear map or blueprint or structure of how to start, how to go through and end a coaching session. And it's, 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 it has the impact of, of freeing us as coaches to put our attention on what the client is all about and what they're wanting and the best next questions we can ask them because this gives us a path. Um, I don't think all coaching schools do that because when people, we call it the, the Erickson, here's the long name, the Erickson Solution Focus Coaching Arrow. We just call it the Coaching Arrow course. Um, <clears throat> when we have uh, people from other organizations um, seeing this coaching arrow, they want they want a piece of it, and because that's how powerful it is, that's how um, important it is, and how effective it is. Yeah, yeah. everyone loves the coaching arrow. I haven't met anyone who doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Now, to your point, without bragging too much, but maybe a little bit, like I, <laughs> I coached a literal brain scientist from San Francisco, right, and we went through things that kind of, you, yeah, she had the theoretic knowledge, but to your point, kind of the skills-based application through coaching that opened her world to, to amazing the new possibilities. I recently coached a tech CEO of an of a AI-based company who sold this company very successfully, right? And I haven't done that before. Like, I'm not going to give him any advice. I'm just going to get into hot water. Like, it's, it's all about the structure. They bring the, the content. I bring the structure because that's what I know how to do. Um, and even more yeah. importantly, yeah. I have coached people in war zones, yeah? in places like Mali, oh, wow. places like Afghanistan, places like Iraq. I, I am not going to give them a certain advice. I don't know how to do their job. 
like I could get them killed if I do that. What I do is I yeah. help them the, to be the best version of who they can be, right? And it is just so important to keep to that coach position and to um, to to just get out of their way in a way and to to just empower them, um, but not jump into the pool with them and play in the content and think you can can give wonderful advice or something like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, those are great examples. Um, and again, I just it 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 it's liberating. It makes it um, it makes it so that you can be available to assist somebody. You know, regardless of, of what their situation is. Um, when we first start with new clients, often they believe that need, you need to understand everything they're talking about, and you that they you know they really want that that acknowledgement, but it's a wonderful thing when they begin to realize it's not necessary and that uh, the coaching is all about them. And, um, and it is, you know, as we repeatedly use our co the coaching arrow and our four pillars of solution focused coaching and the powerful questionings, which is all structural and all process. And um, there's a shift that happens in the, the, the relationship of the coach client. Uh, and, uh, um, and, Sometimes they come into a session and they're basically self-coaching and you're just a witness to it. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we still get paid. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Marilyn, uh, Marilyn Atkinson said that uh, um, uh, developing the solution-focused mindset can be uh, uh, up to a two-year process, right? So there's there's when if when you're coaching someone and you start off with a six month relationship, um, there's usually a, like many breakthroughs that happen around the third or fourth session, uh, and it's shifting a little bit from problems to solutions. And then there's another breakthrough around the six months, uh, and there's some research that supports this, uh, these time frames um, about uh, uh, change. Uh, Prochaska and his change model. He says six months is is uh, if you change in six months, that change is going to last. Hmm. Um, depending on the habit you're forming. And then if the client uh, recontracts for another six months, there can be another major breakthrough around a, the, a year. And then uh, if they can continue with you uh, at the two year mark, there's another breakthrough um, that can happen. And there are cumulative breakthroughs um, and they start to be self-coaching uh, as part of the process, which is what we want. We want the coaching to happen between the sessions as well as in the session itself. Right. very much it takes yeah. it takes on a life of its own yeah and i've i have started to educate my clients that that is going to happen because i've had it happen it's like oh i did i did it on my I did it by myself like three days after the coaching i had the idea in the shower i was like i, I did it myself I was like, <laughs> of course i want you to take full credit for it but i'd like to think the coaching has something to do with it it's not like we're only interacting the one hour and then the influence of coaching stops right it's something that stays with you in the way that you think about things and kind of it through how it percolates in your consciousness. I think it's, I think a, a part of it if, is that, uh, it goes back to what I was talking about with the, you know, the conscious and the deeper knowledge system is that um, as soon as we hear a question, as soon as we ask ourselves a question or someone asks a question as us, the, you know, the, 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 the brain, the deeper knowledge system, whatever, starts to sort for an answer. And the answer may not be immediate, right? Uh, or the deeper answer might not be immediate. It happens three days later, and that's 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 the interesting thing about the power of questions. And this is important to remember when, when we ask us ourselves negative questions, like "What's wrong with me?" or "Am I stupid?" I mean, because the brain is going to do the same thing. So we want to avoid those, We're like, uh, and create habits of asking ourselves, like, "Well, what is great about this problem?" or "What's what uh, what is this telling me that I, that I want more of?" or having better next time yeah yeah it's it, it's a commitment it takes some time but it's part of that whole solution focused mindset development yeah i want to take it even further i i think that uh ericsson is part of a solution focused uh movement or revolution that, that's that's that the planet is so ready for right now i think it's becoming more and more evident that focusing on problems the way we have been is not the solution is not the answer i think that uh people don't know where to where to find those um, 
methods or ideas. They don't. I mean, I, I think that people don't know that coaching is an, is is one way they they can develop that. But I, I, I you know, when I hear conversations at parties and uh, you know and stuff, it's it's it's. I think there's a ripe ripeness right now for for some uh, widespread solution focused uh, mindsets to develop. That's just my point of view. Yeah, yeah I mean, and we're with, part of that with how VUCA volatile, uncertain, chaotic, ambiguous, the word, yeah. the world is becoming, right? It's it's no longer the Cold War, hasn't been for a while. Um, it, again, it's not just about kind of fixing problems, but in what I'm thinking about is it's in a way it's teaching people an entrepreneurial mindset, right? And what mm. goes very much hand in hand with that is taking ownership. I'm taking ownership of my little enterprise. That is my life in a way. And I'm focusing on how to make it work because entrepreneurs are always the underdogs, right? The, the, the odds are never in your favor in a way. You always have to focus on what can I make work? Yeah. If I focus on the problems, I'm out of business within a month because there's enough problems to go around. I don't have to focus on them. But what I have to focus on is the, yeah. the, the solutions that I can like take from, from life's jaw, if you will, in a way. Yeah, and and so there's that uh, double-edged sword kind of a, of self responsibility. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it's it's if you're if you're working for yourself and you're a solo entrepreneur or an entrepreneur who, who people work for you, then then um, the onus, as you said, is on on you. The, I mean, if I if I'm as an entrepreneur, the onus is on me. Uh, so there's so I I have to take responsibility, right? Well, I don't have to, but it, it, it's the smart way to it be helps. with that. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, what I'm saying is, like, there's no boss you can blame anymore for your for your working angst. There's, there's no manager or, uh, you know, other owner. It's like it's, and this is the big surprise uh, that happens to us when we shift from being an employed person to an entrepreneur. It's like, wow, that's you know, it's on me. And uh, I personally think, um, I mean, this is another big discussion, and this is a this is a, a global kind of discussion, but I personally think that uh, to move us globally to the to the next level, whatever we want to call that. I mean, we have different models that talk about the levels. And at Ericsson, we use something called spiral dynamics, and we have first tier levels are six, and then there's uh, a bunch of second tier levels, starting with level seven. I have come to the conclusion that, and I don't think I'm the only one, that to get there requires um a commitment to being fully responsible for how we feel and uh and our thought processes uh, i don't i don't see any other way because the evolution is to go back to a non-hierarchical structure right? i'm self-organizing systems and teams and groups in order to do that we have to let go of the idea that somebody else is in charge and they're irresponsible it's 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 a shared responsibility as we were apparently in hunters and gatherers for hundreds of thousands of years i mean it's easy to think that we've always had these hierarchical structures but we really didn't not the way we do today that's that started with the agricultural revolution when we had the idea of uh, property and who owns what and who has and who hasn't and uh, you know these the, 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 this 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 emerged into our way of life six to ten thousand years ago at least that's the emerging research right now and uh, and uh, so some some high you know, some thinkers are thinking we're we're evolving into a non hierarchical way of doing business and living and. Um, but in order for that to happen, it was, requires a different way for us to show up, you know, as self-leadership. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Self, self-coaching and coaching in general is, is a great, great way yeah. of, uh, of being kind of fit for that in the evolutionary sense. Uh, you're right. That is definitely a discussion all unto its own. <laughs> um, <laughs> very fascinating Didn't help. one. Didn't help it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I hear you. Um, I, we could talk all day. I mean, like whenever we, we meet, we do. Um, so I would say let's <laughs> let's leave it there, maybe for now. Sure. I'm sure we'll we'll have more opportunities for this in the future. Um, Richard, yeah. if there's one thing you want people to take away from this, from all of the things we talked about. If you could choose, just imagine you could find that gem amidst all the um, gold coins that we were uh, discussing today. Um, what Ooh. what would that one thing be? Well, 
it's going to sound a little pithy, but I think, you know, there is hope. There is hope. It, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, there is that. I, 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 I'm bringing that up because I still hear people talking about a, a certain year being the worst year ever for everybody. But, you know, I'm going to be as bold as to say that's that's a choice we make to perceive it that way. Right. And again, another way to look at it is what are all the things that I discovered I don't want? to ever happen again and what would be even better if this next year what would be an amazing year i can honestly say and i don't mean to be dismissive or anything that it wasn't the worst year for me i mean if i look at all the years of my life there were others where i didn't know solution focused thinking and i was very problem oriented that were awful years and um um you know i hated my life uh, but you know that's that's so long ago and that's not who i am anymore so uh, you know so what i what i what i what i want to say is that we have a choice we have a choice where we get to put our attention wherever we want and no one can say anything about it and they may want to drag our attention towards the problem towards the you know the broken china to the dust in the corner and you don't have to go there i think I think that's power. That's empowerment. And uh, um, so for this coming year, it's like, you know, what would be even better if and uh, if I find myself going towards the unwanted that I experienced previously, I'm going to think about it as, as information, as useful information. I'm going to be a little bit detached and I'm going to look at it it's like, OK, that happened or, or that experienced that and it was unpleasant or it was unwanted. But what? is the opposite of that what's on the other side of that that's positive what would i rather have what would i fall in love with what's the wanting that i would fall in love with for 2022 um a mentor of mine uses this terminology and i love it when she does she's like i love my desires i love my wanting and it's like oozy and delicious and she does it in a way that doesn't matter if she ever gets it it's so joyful to want. And this is so interesting to want something and it's not here yet and be in love with the wanting itself and let the unconscious mind and your conscious mind sort it all out or the universe if you want to use a, a more esoteric way of approaching it. Honestly, like, what is it that you're wanting? And forget about if you can't have it or not. At least just revel and bask and bathe and soothe yourself in the experience of having it. Okay. And I believe magic will happen. Well, I don't just believe it. I know it. And that would be my gold coin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's actually a line in, in Goethe's Faust on, uh, on the, just the absolute deliciousness of just wanting and how, when you're enjoying something, you're already looking forward to wanting again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, can I can I end with an almost esoteric story? Please. Is that okay? Yes. I mean, I, I, <laughs> uh, so this happened to me probably nine or ten years ago, around that. And uh, it was summertime, and it was a hot day, and I was living in a place that did not have air conditioning. And I was with my partner, and uh, uh, we were not married at the time. Yeah, I was with my partner, and we were going. We were packing for a trip. I don't remember what trip it was, but one of my long trips. And he was coming with me. And um, and all of a sudden, in the living room, I saw an image of lemonade, which is something I never reach for. I rarely go for. But I saw this lemonade, and I saw it was like an advertisement on television. And I saw the. I can see it again. Like it was yellow and bright, and. And the the dew was dripping, and it was like, and I said out loud, just like this, I really want lemonade. <laughs> and I was in love with that desire, and I didn't have to have it, mm -hmm. right? Like, my partner said, let's go get some. No, no, it's, I just love the idea of lemonade right now. Just the idea. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting, or esoteric, I, or both. Uh, so the next day, we go shopping for some groceries. We walk through my neighborhood and I see something that I've lived in this neighborhood for, you know, for many, many years that I've never seen before. There are two kids about eight years old selling lemonade <laughs> at a lemonade stand. Uh, like I'm, I'm talking, you know, kitty corner from where I live. Like, I don't, I, 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 what did you, what did you pop out And it was so interesting because I, thought, well, I probably should buy this lemonade because it appeared, right? It seems to be appropriate <laughs> to close the loop here, and I did. Um, and what was interesting, though, was that 
the wanting of it was more delicious than the actual lemonade that I drank. Mm -hmm. But I scratched my head about this one. So it was my wanting was so pure, so glorious that how, how you know the universe oriented itself around making it possible for me and you know uh, and we could argue that is on the unconscious level maybe you know I, 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 I picked up clues that I didn't see consciously that had me go that direction to the grocery store that direction home you know who knows but I just love this story because um, there's something to 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 get into the wanting without having to to Figure out the how right away, right? And let your beautiful, deeper unconscious mind sort that out. Um, or do it during a coaching session, which is about asking questions for that part of you. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I give you. Beautiful. Thank you, Richard. So if this session has inspired you to, to want to get certified as a coach <laughs> and to pursue coaching skills, then we, we will tell you the how. As you can... You can uh, learn more about the art and science of coaching in one of our free webinars. They start again in January. Once I go off the air, you'll have the, the exact dates. It'll be um, two dates in January in different time zones so that one will be to your convenience. And just uh, just open that door a little more. And if you, if you have done that already, look forward. If you're an alumni, look forward to the idea of an alumni network of getting in touch, staying in touch, being part of the tribe, sitting down at the... At the the campfire, if you will, um, and um, there's also uh, yeah, on the website. If I'm going by memory, there's a campaign, a promotion that if you sign up for the diploma, that's the full program, uh, the ACTP program. If you sign up for that before January 31st, I think you get six months uh, complimentary for the uh, Ericsson Alumni Project, and you get. Uh, is it fifty percent off? I had to have to look at it. What are the specialty programs that are offered during twenty twenty two? Ericsson.edu. Go find out. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, there was one thing. I was I was building up to something really nice there. Um, so the yeah, the 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 dates are here. of the next free webinars. Um, I lost the trail. Richard, you completely... Hmm. Well, I'll just, yeah, I was right, I just checked. So yeah, the, there's a number of smaller specialty programs uh, that, um, that Ericsson offers. And one of them is, uh, I should have closed it. Um, let's go, let me go back. I'll briefly describe them. But you get to you get to uh, join one of those for free, which is uh, quite generous, I have to say. Find out more. Yeah. So you hit the ground running in the new year. You know, you you dive into kind of this new desire of learning how to coach and do it properly. Right. Yes. So the special courses that are part of that offer are the Parent as Coach, which is um, mm. a short program of using coaching skills uh, as a parent uh, with uh, with your child, um, and it's quite. Uh, it's quite well loved. Um, the mindfulness program, which is called the Art and Science of Mindfulness, which is an Eric, uh, our Ericsson coaching branded version of mindfulness. As a coach, you'll learn other uh, exercises and tools you can use with your client if you want to be more positioning yourself as sort of like a mindfulness or spiritual coach. Uh, then there's coaching companies for leaders, which takes uh, a lot of the basic coaching skills from the art and science of coaching but applies it as if as as you would use it as a leader not with formal structured coaching sessions that you're paid for but as a leader in an organization and uh, how you can use the coaching language and the coaching questions uh, in the flow of your leadership uh, and then the final one here is the light of the Enneagram this is a uh, this is based on a profiling tool called the Enneagram that's becoming more and more popular in corporations, which is interesting. There's nine different types of Enneagrams, and it really reveals, um, it's, um, you really learn a lot about yourself. And then you learn a lot about the person you've married and the person you're dating. <laughs> and yeah, people really who great. have gone through that can't shut up about it. They frame everything, oh. everything in terms of these <laughs> nine types. Oh, you're such a nine. Yeah. Like, yeah, um, it explain it explains so much. It explains so much. It's like there's, there's a lot of light bulbs. Uh, that particular course, like ah, now that makes sense. Right. Each of the types have a stress response, and it's it it's very clarifying. And also, 
and gives a map as to your personal uh, evolution. Um, so yeah, it's it's great. And 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 one of the beautiful things about that program is a, a wider breadth of, of of compassion for people who are not like us, right? Which is really a great direction to go in. Beautiful. Okay. So the one more thing that I wanted to do, and then we'll get out of here, is if you. If we're preaching to the choir, if you've already done the art and science of coaching, hey, now is a great opportunity to to experience it again with a fresh coat of paint. And if you haven't done it in a while, it's so worth. I mean, from somebody who has been doing it in in different capacities over and over and over again, you learn something new every time. Even if and especially if you already know the basics, there's a deeper layer that you can dive into. Where if you start teaching other people about it, you it start make, starts to make even more sense, right? So if you Sometimes you, you miss a sense of belonging. You want to get an even deeper understanding of your coaching. Just do the art and science again, especially right now where, where, where it's, it's a little unfamiliar, but, but you, know, you know it, but, but it's, it's a little different. Um, it's going to be a great experience. It's one of the best kept secrets because it really doesn't cost a lot, right? Like the retaking it costs so much significantly less than taking it the first time. So it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and I, uh, I, I, I think, yeah, I think that we'll have a special review um, structure. I think that's being decided just around now uh, for the the, the uh, enhanced task as uh, Art and Science of Coaching starting in January, and um, and then you'll have the benefit of the new uh, the new look and feel, the manuals. So you'll have access to all that, the manuals, uh, the videos. Um, yeah. We have to come up with something better than review. I'm still advocating for a new game. Plus. It's a terrible. It's a terrible name. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a new. It's, it's a new. It's playing the same game, but with something extra. Like you can be, you get to play it in a different way. It's it's so much more than the name review suggests. I know. I know. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. And it's like, yeah, that's uh, that's in discussion right now. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So. And, and, a little few more perks. I don't know what they're going to be. Well, yes. thank you, Fabian. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, I'm dropping the hammer. We're going off the air. This has been so much fun. Thank you very much, everybody. And um, see you next week for, for the next episode. Thank you, Richard. Stay dry.